All right, welcome to unit two, lecture six, section 6.3, your last one for the unit. Okay, so in this one, we're gonna talk about biodiversity ecosystems and resilience. Learning objectives, explain the types of biodiversity, identify the benefits of biodiversity, identify some important ecosystem benefits. Oops, sorry, I was expecting one more there. I don't know why. So biodiversity, if we think about the word bio, bio means life, right? And diversity means different. So this is all of the different variation in life that there could be. And this is talking about from the tiniest bacteria all the way up to us, okay? So biodiversity is all of that variation in the biosphere. And a lot of times we think of it as being genetically based or species based, but it's, it's all of that variation from top to bottom. There are a few different types of biodiversity. Ecosystem diversity, so just the diversity in all of the different ecosystems. So all the different biomes, okay, wetlands, um, o different ocean biomes, different land biomes, all of that. Species diversity, which is just all the different species that there are. And then genetic diversity. So down to the actual genetic level, we can look at the diversity for all the different organisms out there. So here is a picture of potatoes. These are all different kinds of potatoes. Now, number one, this is not what French fries look like, correct? I know, French fries are my favorite. Okay, number two, we don't eat all of these different types of potatoes, but they can be used for different things. Um, and then there's a new thing. Um, I don't know if any of your families are really into gardening or whatever, but heirloom, heirloom varieties. Okay, that's trying to preserve the species and the genetic diversity. Now, a lot of the times the species and the genetic diversity go hand in hand because the more species you have, the more individuals you have, the more genetics you have just the way it goes. Ecosystem is just talking about like the habitat um, and the different areas in which all of these organisms can live. So one of the things that people um, talk about when it comes to biodiversity benefits is that this actually contributes to our medicine and our agriculture. Um, most medicines originated with something in nature. Okay, in some way, shape, or form. Um, aspirin. Aspirin originally came about because of the willow tree. Um, people would use willow bark, and it would be it would work like aspirin does. Um, we've taken it, we've refined it, we've synthesized it. Okay, so now we can, you know, we have more of it, and we're not. Excuse me, we're not just chomping on some willow bark or anything. But you could. Okay. But what it does, and then agriculture is we end up having, you know, all of the different species of plants that we mix together to get the right corn or to get this or to get that or, you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But a lot of our crops come from putting different species or different versions, different subspecies together and trying to see what happens because plants are actually really good at mixing genes way better than animals are. And so we can get a wide variety of uh, types by mixing a couple different species together. And then what biodiversity does, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later on in the year when we get to genetics, but what biodiversity does specifically is that it actually maintains um, a library, if you will, of ways of adapt, adapt, adaptations Okay, and what that does is it allows ecosystems and organisms or populations or whatever to survive changes over the course of time. So as we continue, as we limit the biodiversity, we actually hamstring the pop, um, hamstring the population, hamstring the species. Uh, and when I say hamstring, I mean like cutting them off the hamstring so you can't walk. Okay, they we take away that ability for them to adapt to any changes that they come across. So many medicines were first discovered in wild species, like the willow bark, like I told you. And then genetic diversity is important in agriculture because what happens is those wild plants is we can pull in those genes that do different things, um, or we can pull in uh, genes from other plants and stuff like that. So using it's, 
biodiversity is just a library of information and genes and and um, useful stuff. That's really what it boils down to. The biggest thing that biodiversity protects against is it protects against something happening um, and totally wiping out a population or totally wiping out a species. And this is one of the problems that they're starting to run across with our agriculture and monocropping. Um, the bananas especially are experiencing this. There's estimations that bananas will be extinct within the next 50 years because they're all the same banana. Like, legit like we just copied and cloned the same banana over and over and over again and they're worried that that banana is going to die out because there's a disease that's attacking it so what happens is that you've got a really good graph he, graphic here where in a diverse ecosystem where we have red and gold species okay over the course of the years it survives it may change a little bit okay there may be a little bit of fluctuation between how many red and how many gold but we still get to keep both of them, okay? And we still get to keep an entire field of them, okay? Whereas if we only had one species, if we were in a situation where we lost them or they couldn't survive here where we have dominated by red species, what happens? The gold species are completely gone, okay? And, we can, and depending on what that... Um, what kind of species these are, if the conditions are not within those tolerance ranges, we could lose all of the red species as well. Okay, uh, we don't have anybody to kind of back us up there. Or the same with the gold species, all right? We don't have the red species to back us up in the years where the gold species aren't as, um, aren't, aren't as good. So what that, what biodiversity builds in is what's called resilience. And what that does is it describes the ability to recover after a disturbance. So biodiversity actually protects an ecosystem from, um, from coming, what's the word I'm looking for? From becoming completely um, decimated, all right, if we have a bad time or a bad year. The more divided, the more biodiversity an ecosystem has, the more resilient it's likely to be because over the course of 50 years, we're gonna have some wet years, we're gonna have some dry years, but over the course of the 50 years, it all works out that it's okay and it's stable and there's always one or the other. Ecosystem services and biodiversity. So one of the things that people often talk about or don't necessarily remember in the case of why preserving biodiversity is incredibly important is that there's a whole lot of ecosystem services that otherwise we would not have if it wasn't for biodiversity. And as humans, we tend to think we're pretty isolated from our natural world and that nothing that's going on out there really affects us because we've got houses. Okay, we've got lights, we've got air conditioning, we've got heat, we've got blankets, we've got clothes, we've got all of that stuff. But there's things that the ecosystem does for us that we can't do as efficiently or as cheaply, really. Um, purifying water. Okay, uh, a lot of drinking water still comes from natural sources. And it would cost us a lot of time, energy, and money to do, to do large-scale uh, cleaning processes um, that the ground does for us for free okay because as the water actually goes down through the soil or through wetlands or whatever it actually the soil actually cleans it like a filter okay buffering effects of weather right we have done a number to New Jersey shores because we have built on them okay and we weren't supposed to build on them because what they're supposed to do is they're actually supposed to protect the rest of New Jersey, right? But we like to go to the beach and we like to sit on the sand and go um, hang out in the ocean. And so what's happened is we ended up um, having a lot of, <laughs> we've caused a lot of problems um, and having to constantly rebuild our beaches because they're supposed to take the damage um, so it doesn't actually affect us further in. Pollinating. Agriculture wouldn't work if we didn't have bees 
and flies and butterflies and birds and everything else that we need that we can use to pollinate all of the different crops okay and all the other different animals or animals all the other different plants so what you know so biodiversity helps make sure that that pollination happens regulating pests okay um, eating eating insects bats we have a huge problem here in new jersey with mosquitoes right awful i don't know about you but the summer is terrible okay i i can't even be outside for like five minutes and i get like 20 mosquito bites right they just love me i don't know why okay but what happened is our bat population has really started to decrease and bats are known for eating mosquitoes so if we could actually raise the bat population we could actually get them to work on eating the mosquitoes a little bit you know and other birds other insect um, insectivores okay they eat insects all right food production um, ocean areas fishing uh, that kind of stuff Okay, nutrient cycling, we talked about the carbon cycle. We talked about, I mean, the water, right? We could put that into the nutrient cycles because we kind of talked about them at the same time. But we need oxygen to breathe, right? Everybody likes breathing, right? So I'm, I'm a fan, okay? So we need that oxygen to breathe. Guess what's gonna do that for us? The plants, the plants are gonna take in the carbon dioxide, use it, and then they're gonna release the oxygen. So who gets to breathe in the oxygen? we do all right so that's a huge thing i can't make oxygen i can't it's not part of my nature i don't have the skills i'm sorry i have a lot of skills but that's not one of them okay and then maintaining soil structure so this kind of goes along with buffering effects of weather um not only are we talking about soil health and soil nutrition and the nutrients in it so the plants can grow and start the food web all over again but also making sure that the soil stays there plants are huge um, factors in making sure that soil stays in place and doesn't erode so there's a lot of reasons why biodiversity is incredibly important that we might not always think about at the end of the day because we're not it, we're kind of a little removed from it um, but it's really important to think about how many ways those different things kind of protect us Okay, that's the end of Unit 2. I hope you had a great day. Talk to you later.